I'm in Calhoun County talking to my friend Hank Stallworth at his place, which originally was owned by his grandfather. And Hank, you had a problem last year with armadillos turning up in the yard. That was a surprise. Well, it was a surprise because we hadn't had that problem before. And the, the, big, the real problem was that my wife was having a garden tour and she was concerned that the holes that they leave when they dig for their prey, for the, for the worms and the grubs and the things that are in the ground, they dig a cone-sized hole, maybe six inches in diameter, big enough to grab your ankle or your foot when you go by and twist your ankle or may even cause you to fall. And she was concerned about that, having a, a lot of people in the yard with that. Plus, she just didn't like having all these holes in her yard. And so I went to the hardware store here in town and, and bought a have a heart trap, live trap, about the size you use for a raccoon. And it, it looked right and everybody said it would work for armadillos. And I went on the internet where you can find what they eat and what to use for bait and what their habits are. And you find out they're nocturnal. They don't see very well in the daytime or the nighttime. They smell really well. They can find those worms underground. But the way you trap them, according to the professionals who, who remove these pests from people's yards, is you have to put a baffle up, such as we have here today, that, that moves the animal, for, he, he encounters the, the board, and he moves down it. it kind of guides him guides into the him trap. guides him into the door of the trap. Because you don't put a bait in there, there's nothing to bait with. Uh, they, according to the, all my, the sources I looked at on the internet, there's no bait that all you right. can use. The, so once the animal encounters this, if he encounters the right side of the board, he goes in the trap. If it's the wrong side of the board, he goes somewhere else. It's just luck. And it took a couple of nights, but we did catch one. Unfortunately, he bent the trap up enough to get out. Gosh. So that wasn't going to work. No. Um, and I don't know if it was just that one armadillo and he was real strong or if they're all like that. But I talked to a Gabe Morton friend of mine here in this county and he knew of another fellow, Kevin Collins, who makes them and makes them out of wood such, just like he made this one. So this is sturdier, It's tougher. way sturdy. It's, it's, um, it's, it's made out of treated wood so it can be out in the weather and it's sturdy and it doesn't come apart. And the one, uh, one of the things that's probably as important as anything else, it, it holds the scent of the armadillo. Uh -huh. And once you capture a couple of armadillos, you can pick up this trap. You don't have to mess with the baff baffles anymore. Uh -huh. You don't have to set them up. It's a little bit of trouble to set up this many boards this long. Once you've caught a couple of armadillos and the scent's in this trap, they'll come to the trap. They're curious. They want to see what another armadillo found. And they walk right in and, and trap themselves. So you can move it to another problem area. You can even do what you did for me. That's right. Which was to, Amanda got a trap just like this one. And we put the, the trap up next to this one with an armadillo in it, raised the door on both traps, transferred the armadillo into Amanda's trap so that it would have, the scent would get into her trap and that you could then go in your yard mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have to set up these baffles. Which is kind of a big deal. It's, it's, it's a nuisance. And it's but, a nuisance. It, but it works. It works. Yeah. And, but once, if you've got a wooden box rather than a metal one, then it, it, it holds that smell. And we've caught 22. So it, 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 I know that works. I mean, I didn't believe it at first when Kevin told me, but it's true. This trap has these two boards that are held up in the air. So explain to us what happens when the armadillo actually comes in, please, honey. Like, like some of our grandparents' old rabbit boxes, the animal enters through the hole and encounters a, a stick, which is a trip, and when he pops that trip, uh -huh. he's caught. Mm -hmm. And he can't get out, and as, as, we've, as you can see, it's a heavy wood, plywood thing, and they can't get out. They try to come out this little hole, but this is a thick piece of, of treated plywood and he can't come out of that. The next morning you find him and you, do, you dispose of him. When you capture a wildlife species, you're not supposed to move them off your property unless you have some kind of license, which none of us do. Right. And you're supposed to humanely dispose of that, but you ran into another situation doing that. So tell us how you overcame that and what you tried. Okay, the, the armadillos 
What I did find early on in the process was that Armadillo is a whole lot faster than you think he is. I mean, he can run like, he can just scoot like a rabbit. Mm -hmm. And you think they're gonna <clears throat> waddle around like a possum, but they don't. That's the way you see them go across your yard, but that's not what happens when they're threatened. So after letting one get away, um, I decided I'd put him in a barrel, an old roundup barrel that we'd washed out and used for a lot of things. Put him in that, figured that the bullet would go through that. When it went through, you could shoot him in the head and it would be quick and... Yes, um, humane. And humane, and, and the bullet would go right on through that plastic, and, but it didn't. When I dumped the armadillo out, there was no hole, there wasn't even a dent, which meant the bullet came up right back by my head, so I didn't do that anymore. No. <laughs> I went to an enclosed place, it, and you have to tip the armadillo out, he doesn't want to come out, and when he gets out, then you're able to get a shot on his head so that he never knows what happened. Mm -hmm. And then I take him out, and well, we're lucky here because we have a back 40. And I can take him out to the back 40 and put him out and wait for the vultures to come, convert him to a vulture. Hank, this is an animal that a lot of us are going to start encountering in our landscapes, urban and rural, and I want to thank you for giving us some insights in how we can control them. Um, and try to have a garden that's not full of holes. And it's fun talking to you, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you.